Talmor, Sheshin Mugachi. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Burntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I uncover the blasphemous truth of a plague-ridden world, that ours is not a loving God, and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Buntwine, coming January 2nd, wherever podcasts are available. And it's weird because it's an audition, so it's like I'm trying to just do exactly what I think that they would want instead of doing what I think could enhance his character. Hello, world, and welcome back to Thanks for Coming In. I'm your host, Jillian Clare. If this is your first week tuning in, welcome to the madness. This is the show where I speak to fellow actors about their journey in the entertainment industry, and I make them share uh, some bad audition stories with me. Today on the show, we have Victoria Richards. She plays Treasure on the new HBO Max show, Rap Shit, from Issa Rae. Uh, We had a great conversation, so... Quick little warning, when we recorded this episode, um, there was a severe storm where Victoria was, so you will probably hear thunder in the background that is very loud, and it may cut out a little here and there. We tried to fix it, but weather will be weather, Um, so I just wanted to give you all that warning, but here, here's our talk. I'm so excited to have you on today. Um, You are part of a brand new show that I'm so stoked to talk about, but before we get there, we have to talk about how you got started in uh, acting and this crazy industry. (laughs) All right, let's get into it. So I was definitely one of the kids who heard on the radio, like, hey, like, if you want to be on Disney Channel, call this number at 777. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. I totally remember those commercials. Thank you. (laughs) And they would always play them. And I would be watching That's a Raven. That was, like, my favorite show growing up. And I'm like, I want to be on That's a Raven. Like, Wizards of Ripley plays all those shows. And I'm like, once I heard that little, like, call, I was like, Mom, call the number. Like, this is like, like, oh, it might be a scam. Like, I don't want you to get your hopes. I'm like, I don't care. Just call it. Like, let's just see so we called it. I went to LA and was like meeting casting directors. I was like seven at the time too. So wow. I was just kind of like getting my feet in the door with the acting and being a part of the industry and stuff. But it was too hard to balance that with school at the time. Mm. And my mom wanted me to get like the social experience and character development that like school gives you as a child. So she was like, let's just take a break. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of just focus on school and do like yeah. extracurricular activities within school and stuff. So I got more into sports, and I've been running track since ninth grade. I went to a sports academy in Florida, IMG Academy. Wow. Yeah, I was running track there. So I was, like, really taking sports serious. Then I went to college for it at U of A, Arizona, and was running it there. But by the time I got to college, my love for track had definitely decreased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was just like, oh, like my heart's not really in it anymore. And it was like 110 degrees in Arizona. And I was just uh-uh. like, no, yeah, absolutely like, not. <laughs> anymore. Like, no way. I'm done. And then obviously this was 2019. So going into 2020, COVID happens mm-hmm. and everybody has to come home. This is on the third. And, you know, like when you run track, you have like scholarship, like when you're a part of sports and stuff. So. I was, like, trying to find a way to say I didn't want to run track anymore. Mm. But, like, my parents are the type where it's, like, you need to be doing more than one thing. You need to continue to, like, expand and stuff. So I was just, like, dang, like, I need to get back into acting. But I don't know how I'm going to say it. So it was, like, a whole little process or whatever. Anyways, long story short, I quit track, started back into acting. And just I just started going for it again. And I was just, like, if they're going to let me quit, then I have to put – everything I have into this Mm. and that was what 2020 looked like for me and it was great because although a lot of bad happened in 2020 for me it was like that transitional year where I was able to start doing what I loved again you know what I mean so yeah 
Yeah. And I, I wonder too, if it was not necessarily easier, but if it was a bit more like emotionally easier, I guess, only by not having to actually physically be in person with auditions. Like it was a nice, maybe like a nice little ease back ease into back in. things. Exactly, exactly. It wasn't like, boom, in front of like 10 agents, 10 casting directors yeah. in the room, all eyes were on you. It's like, I got to do virtual auditions. So mm -hmm. I get to redo it, do it over again. And if it was Zoom, then it's Zoom. But it's still not all that added pressure of just like hopping right back into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was, it was perfect. It was perfect. You know what I mean? And so. where, so did you go back to where you're from when COVID happened? Or did you come out to LA or New York? Or what was that, that process yeah, for you? I, so like we talked about, because everything was like virtual auditions, I went right back home and yeah. I hadn't decided fully that I was going to just go back into it. So it wasn't <laughs> like, oh, let me move to LA. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it was like, I came back home and I was just like, hey, we can start doing like these online auditions. Like, let's mm. just, you know, like whatever. So we started doing that. And I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina originally, but I'm based in Atlanta, but I'm thinking of moving to LA. It's a whole other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, think you should. I think Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta is so huge right now. I mean, the industry, industry is Atlanta's booming. It, it is. Don't, okay, look, this has been a whole debate too. I was just at InvestFest. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's like a camp for like learning about investing and financial literacy. And oh, wow. Guys who, yeah, it was really cool. My brother like pushed me to go and stuff and we went there and I was talking to somebody in the industry about like moving to LA and they're like, well, like you don't have to move to LA. No. Like Atlanta really like, oh, I know, but... I know so that... many people who, like, have moved to Atlanta because it's, like, you can get great work in Atlanta and you don't have to have the L.A. prices. I mean... Exactly. <laughs> That's what's stopping, like, you know what I mean? It's so expensive living in L.A., so I was always the type to be like, I don't want to go there unless I'm, like, working, working, like, mm -hmm. and really bringing it in consistently, you know what I mean? But I was pray on it. We'll get it. We'll get to it. We'll get to the we'll get to it. <laughs> So, okay, so you go to you go back home to North Carolina and you start auditioning. And what was like the first the first bigger audition that you had where you're like, oh wow, like okay, this is, you know, this is this is right. I'm supposed to be on this track. I understand now. Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good I honestly will say, um, so I did this project in Atlanta actually. And I had to play like a street gangster type of person. And that's Fun. so far from like my personality. <laughs> As you wear and... this beautiful, nice white blouse and perfectly right, manicured right. hair. <laughs> so just, you know, I'm not mean and evil. So it was like, I was like, hood. And I had to do the audition for it. And it wasn't even like it was some huge audition. It was just such a stretch from the typical mm. audition doing so i was just like now let's see what i'm really made of like let's really see if i can tap into a character that is far from me you mm -hmm. know what i mean and really get into like an acting bag really expand so i'll say that was one that i can remember that i was just kind of like oh no nah, like i really i'm really doing this because i got yeah. hurt and i was just like wow like I was believable. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. It's like for more than just pretty cheerleader. So that kind of right. let me know. You know what I mean? That like I'm bigger than just this type of role, like a type A role, type B role. So, you know, that was kind of like what totally. I Totally. I mean, it was the the confirmation of saying I I have more inside of me than what is yeah. just what is meant to be what I'm supposed to be. It's supposed to be based off of my look. Like yes. I have versatility. And yes. that kind of showed me that. And I feel like versatility is what will allow you to be long lasting in this industry as well. hundred so, percent. Yeah. I mean, you have to be versatile. You have to be a chameleon. You have to be able to like fall into your roles. And so you exactly. disappear and, and the character takes over. So yeah. I'm wondering too, did you go back to training when you decided to make this call of going back into acting? Or did you say, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens? So what it was, was I'll say for the first maybe two months it was just kind of like man i don't need like i got it i used to do this mm. for real like i like you know what i mean i kind of had like an arrogant attitude and then i've like you know as life 
typically humbles you. I was just like, you know what? There is more for me to learn. Like the industry is yeah. not the exact same as when I was seven. Yeah. <laughs> so I did join some acting classes still on over Zoom. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you the difference in the amount of auditions I was getting before and after these classes, because I only took two, but they were so impactful. They were mm-hmm. so impactful. It was like casting agents, directors, producers, and, and, and all types of people within the Zoom that were kind of just giving us game. Like the biggest thing for me that I didn't really understand and know was that for auditions, you do not have to stick to the script every single time. Like you can go off script. You can kind of put your personality into it or the personality that fits the character. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And kind of just add to it and expand it and make it your own. Literally. Like a lot of writers aren't necessarily married to their script. You know what I mean? And sometimes the way you do an audition is so different from how they even imagined it that they want to give it to you Mm because it's just like wow you just made me think of the character i wrote differently Mm. so it was kind of like her um her explaining to me it was a casting it was a casting agent i can't think of her name right now but her explaining that to me because she had us like read um scripts and stuff for her to like give us some pointers on how we can improve our auditions and she was just kind of like you're really good but like you're kind of sticking to the script like you can go up it doesn't have to be like perfect like, you know what I mean? You can, like, get a little dirty, get a little, like, really get into it. You know yeah. I mean? You can move around. You can. And I was just like, oh, okay. Like, so I don't have to just stand up straight. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's weird because it's an audition. So it's like I'm trying to just do exactly what I think that they would want instead of doing what I think could enhance his character and bring it to life. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the tricky balance is finding yeah. – Finding what works for you and what works for the character that you've created and marrying it with the person that they, that you think that they might want. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, it's always, it's a tried and true method of always just being yourself and bringing what you can offer to the role. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to book you the role is bringing you because you're what's interesting. The character is just something on a, on a page and you're, you're the interesting part. You're bringing it to life. And it's like we all have different perspectives in life. So my way of bringing it to life is going to look different than your way of bringing it to life. But how I do it can make you be like, oh, no, Mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for. You know, because a lot of times they don't. It's weird. Well, I'll get into that later. But yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it's it's interesting. It makes me think of this thing that a casting director told me once, which was um, especially with self tapes and whatnot. Like, don't sit there and try to get the perfect take. Send in the tape where you screw up. Send in the audition where it's not perfect because it makes it different. Everybody else has been, you know, working on the same tape for like two hours and you have a tiny little hiccup. Well, that's actually going to be better. All right. So I want to talk to you about your new show from Issa Rae, the queen, uh, Rap which is on HBO Max. Tell me about it. Tell me about your character. Yes. Um, okay, so I think you said you want to talk about the new show on HBO Max. That's all you said. Okay, cool. Um, uh, yeah, rap. I don't think I don't think we can say the whole word on here, so I'll just call it rap. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Like, I don't know if you've seen any of the show yet, but it's so funny. And like the main girls, Chameleon and Aida, they killed it. Like when I tell you, neither of them have like acted before this either. Neither of wow. them acted before this. Like, and Issa Rae is known for picking like raw talent to bring her vision to life for what she wants to do. And when I like, they were cast it so perfectly. It was such a good time on set. And this audition story is actually very funny as well because <laughs> when I first got the audition, I play Treasure, and Treasure is like a fine hooker with a lisp, right? And I was just kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sell it, like you know <laughs> what I mean? And it wasn't. Um, it wasn't too long before this that I did the um, that I did the class where it was telling me don't stick to the script, just go for it, mm. just get like you know just fully engross yourself into the character. And for this specific audition, when I tell you, I was literally just like, and girl, I don't, I don't know. like you know what I mean. It was just like I completely got into it. You know what I mean? It was so yes. cool. Yes. You know what I mean? So I was really excited that I got it and getting on set with such notable and accomplished people such as Issa, Sarita, and everybody else who was on the set. It was just kind of like, never for a moment did I feel like I didn't add value to the project. They're very Mm -hmm. intentional about making everybody feel worthy of being there. You know what 
I mean, just stay encouraged. Like the set, the environment of the set was so uplifting, and it was it was such a good time. And especially because the show was like comedy as well, it was always laughing and jokes. And like, I got super close to my two co stars, Jasmine and um, Daisy. Well, Naja and Daisy. I don't know why I'm calling her a character name, but Naja and Daisy, <laughs> who plays Jasmine and Peaches, <laughs> we used to always do that too. Where I'll be like, Daisy, I mean Peaches, like you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I got so close with them, and we had such a good set experience. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's more to come too. It's more to come. So, I love that. How is um, Issa? Is she on set with you guys, or is she um, seeing things from afar? Yes, Issa's like one like that's another thing about being on set. Like you're in it. Like Issa's there every day. I think it was one mm-hmm. time I was on set where she wasn't there, but she's like so engrossed into the project. Like she's really there. Like really calling shots. Like really watching it. Really giving you notes to your ear. Like it'll be seen. She would come up to me and be like, "So how do you play this? Like this is not the third. I'm just like, um, um, I guess I can do this. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Because it's like." <laughs> involved she's that involved with her projects which is really cool to see you know what i mean so yeah yeah i mean it's amazing to see that because she's <laughs> it's like storming over i don't know what's yeah. going on <laughs> i mean it's so hard holy crap that was intense <laughs> i can't believe i heard thank you i'm like i'm not li- like it's storming but okay Dang. That's why okay um wow um <laughs> Amazing to hear, though, about Issa, because I think, you know, very easy for people who have found success to kind of just, you know, things and putting things out there and not really be that involved. And so for her, yeah, be just putting their name so in involved, it's like, like, yeah, so is dope. <laughs> um, so on the show, we like to share. I know. Like, I need your list as well. <laughs> um, so so- what? On the show, we like to share audition stories. Is there a audition Ooh. you would like to share with your listeners? Okay, so one audition story I can think of that was so looking back. I really did try. I really did try. But my mom, she, like, submits me for different things um, when I'm, you know, traveling and stuff. So she'll, like, randomly text me, like, hey, like, can you do gymnastics? Like, hey, can you speak <laughs> freaking like, you know, Arabic, like, yeah. thing like that. So it was one time where I was coming home and she was like, hey, like, can you do a Haitian accent? And I was like, no. And she was like, well, I submitted you for this thing. And you don't have to do a Haitian accent. And I was like, what? So, like, for, like the next hour, I was, like, listening and, like, looking oh up on God. YouTube how to do the accent. This and <laughs> like, I was really like, you know what? I'm just going to really try and give it my best before you know yeah so i had this audition <laughs> and i'm like playing like a 30 year 38 year old mom and my like son timothy is going away but he's like it's like a whole situation i barely remember but i just remember thinking like when they watch this audition they about to be like why did you even submit <laughs> like but i really did try it was literally like demo <gasps> dsg do this like little stuff like that. Like I just like it was funny, but safe to say I did not get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's always I did not get it. <laughs> always difficult when there's a new accent that you need to learn for an audition. Yes, <laughs> yes, but it definitely showed me I'm like capable. It wasn't like that that good. But I was just like, dang, like I was getting pretty close to you know what it could be. I also looked young, so I wasn't probably a fit for the role, but. <laughs> I was just like, okay. What else do you have on the horizon for for Miss Victoria? What's next? Ooh. So I have a feature film coming up called Babby, the curse word. <laughs> um, and basically, <laughs> basically, I'm like a poetry slam artist Ooh. in it, which is really cool because I write poetry in real life as well. So it's really cool to be able to kind of like explore within this character and poetry that he's given me to read. It's actually helped me in my own stuff as well but yes that's coming we start filming in november amazing november so we're kind of just developing the character right now and doing like read throughs and stuff so yes be looking out for that i love that and um on that note where can people follow you so they can watch all these elements of the things that are happening yes follow me on instagram at vrich v-r-i 
I C H H H three H's. Um, yes, follow me there. I just got a Twitter, so it's, like, I guess you can follow me on Twitter, but I'm not really, you know what I mean, I'm just gonna get it. But it's the same name for that, same name for TikTok, and yes, go tune in to Rap Shit every Thursday, and laugh your butt off. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was uh, so nice to talk to you. I hope that storm goes away. I know, oh my gosh, like... <laughs> trying to kill the whole interview <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, was nice good. talking to you Jillian <laughs> Thanks again to Victoria for coming on the show. It was so fun talking to her and meeting her. Um, if you're not watching Rap Shit on HBO Max, what are you doing? Go watch it. Catch up on the series. Um, and yeah, tune in next week for another fun episode. If you're not subscribed to the show, subscribe to it now, wherever you're, uh, wherever you're listening to my voice. <laughs> and uh, leave us some love. Hit the buttons. Hit all the buttons. I don't know. Um, and we'll see you next week. And as always, thanks for coming in. Hi, I'm Alexis Ohanian. You may know me as one of the co-founders of Reddit, but more recently, a large part of my identity is being a father to my two wonderful daughters. In my podcast, Business Dad, I'm hoping to open up the conversation about balancing careers and family. The one thing I constantly hear successful people say, without fail, is that they wish they'd spent more time with their kids. That's time no one can get back. So I decided to create Business Dad, to engage in the conversation about how we're spending our time now, providing a forum for successful dads to share their joys and challenges of being a working parent. You'll get to hear from a wide range of business dads, from Rain Wilson and Guy Raz, to Todd Carmichael and Shane Battier. And while this podcast will talk about business and will definitely be featuring dads, I think everyone can learn something from these incredible conversations as we unpack the expectations we all have about careers, relationships, and ourselves. Business Dad is available now, so be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs>